Well, thank you very much. And we've had our introductions and good afternoon and welcome to the London Hug. Um, we're going to be delving into the merge of human creativity and AI, which is obviously a really big thing at the moment. So I just want to get a feel for the room. I thought I was being really clever with this, but clearly polls have been done before me. But what I would like to know, is there anybody here that dislikes AI? Be honest. Oh, you guys are shy. No? You all love AI. Are you going to say? OK. I just need to show of hands. So who loves AI? Clearly, you better have your hand up. OK, thank you. Um, who is unsure whether it can help or hinder? Thank you. I love you guys. You're so honest. Thank you. Um, and who currently uses an AI platform? Who currently uses an AI platform for content? Ah, cool. Right. OK, so we're going to crack on. So the big question, what makes us uniquely human in an era where AI challenges this uniqueness daily? So obviously it's growing expansively. So we're seeing that artificial intelligence is here, it's growing, but does it make us any less human? Because obviously it's taken over quite a lot of things. So this is what I'm here to talk about today. Or do we have a unique value that AI cannot touch? But before we explore, I want to give you a little bit of backstory on myself. I'm not going to bore you with too much history, but I started with a love of writing, then I went into teaching. Then I was with White Hat, I was a content writer, head of content now, and also a, con a content marketing consultant with PMC. And here I am today. So, I have a few warnings for you. I can be a bit loud, so I hope I'm not shouting. Sorry, I apologize. It's, it's being a teacher, you have to get your voice to the back of the room so the kids are still awake. Yeah, so I apologize if I'm too loud, and I'm gonna try not to move around so much, because obviously the camera man's going to Get annoyed, yeah? Is that right? Okay. Oh, sorry, sorry. Okay, this way? Okay. Um, and I also require audience participation, as you saw, because I gave it away. Um, and if you don't put your hands up, I will just pick on you, because that's what teachers do. Um, so, as we're going to go along, and you know that it's audience participation. So, not now. I need you to find somebody, when I say, that you don't know. So that could be somebody in front of you, behind you, next to you, because we're all here to network, so I'm making you do it because I'm really pants at networking. I love talking to people, but one-on-one, -on -one, it scares the out of me. So I'm just trying to force it a little bit so that you know somebody by the time that you've left here. So I'm going to give you 30 seconds thinking time when I reveal the questions, and then you're going to have two minutes to ask the person get the answer, and for you to receive it back to them. Don't worry, you're going to love it. You look, look looking at me like, oh my God, what is she doing? So, questions. If you were an ice cream flavour, what would you be? <laughs> or, if you were a vending machine, what would you give out? I told you you're going to love the questions, it's fine. So I am going to give you your 30 seconds. I've already set up my timer. Starting from now, you're going to think of your two answers, because you don't know what question you're going to be asked by the person. Okay, two minutes are up. Thank you very much. You didn't hear me the first time, so I wasn't loud. You must like me being loud. So, do I have any volunteers? Remember what I said, I will pick you. Okay, the lady in the striped jumper. Yeah, <laughs> sorry, I, I did warn you. I told you I'd give you warnings. You can either give your answer or you can give your friend's answer, because we now all know somebody just as unique as us. I'm sure we've had some interesting um, conversations. What would you like to do? You, can either, you don't have to say if it was your new friend, or you can say your own answer. So, for ice cream, you said mint chocolate chip, because the chocolate's the kind of sweet side that people like, but the mint side is a little questionable. Some people do like it, and some people don't, so they don't always get Oh, I like that. So, mint chocolate chip for the sweet side, and for some people who don't like it. Yeah. That's amazing. Anybody else? Remember, I said I would just pick you. Gentleman on the end, just leaning nice and casually. Yeah, see, you, you just walked right into it. Uh, we went with uh, pistachio, <laughs> although. Yes. Not so sure about the colour. <laughs> okay, pistachio. So, for myself, I'm also pistachio because it's, very, it's a very um, select, for a selected palette. Not everybody likes it. Um, so yeah, so that is absolutely great. So I don't know if you understand this exercise, but the questions are random, obviously, but it evokes thought and encourages um, connection and emotion. And this is kind of what we want to get out of content. 
Um, so once you've decided your answer and then you revealed it to the person that asked you, it then makes them wonder because they want to, well, well, why? And again, this is what we are trying to do with content. So you're lucky, like myself, you and I, we could relate. So when you do that with content, you then create a bond. Okay? So this is what makes us human, but we're here to see about AI. So let's see how they did. Right, so there we go. This is AI. I asked them the same thing. You can see how I politely address AI because if it ever takes over the world, I can say that I was nice and it just, please don't kill me. Um, to be fair, the answers were, were quite, they were quite good, but from the beginning, it tells us that it's a language model and it possesses no personal taste or preference. And this is great if, you know, Disconnection from personal taste and preference is great if you need to be impartial or you need to do research or you need to report information. But when it comes to creating content in this way, something's missing. So the vitality of human touch in content creation. So as AI advances, um, thankfully we remain you know, unique in the way that we go about our business. And it's our experiences and our emotions that that uh, create this core. But we're going to look at some content campaigns that rather than you know, going down the whole tech savvy route, they relied on heartfelt um, storytelling to create connections and authenticity. And I think you will know some of these. So for time's sake, I've only chosen two, but we all know Dove and we all know Nike. So Dove did something really cool um, and they decided to celebrate what makes each of us unique. Um, and they did about a, a campaign all about uh, body awareness and inclusiveness. And they turned the tables on the beauty, the traditional beauty thing by putting real women of ages, shapes, sizes into the limelight. Um, and why did they do this? This was because the world needed to know the real definition of beauty. Um, and it helped a lot of people realise that, yeah, actually, do you know what? Yeah, I'm, I am beautiful. We don't have to conform to these kind of ridiculous, unrealistic beauty standards that have been going around that when I think Dove did this maybe like in 2011 so not a whole heap has changed but uh, we're, we're making progress still sometimes it takes a bit of time to get in there but what can we learn from them so like the way that they delivered their content they delivered the whole campaign itself that cause related marketing leads your customers to think about your values before your product so I know these are ads that um, were sort of like on billboards and on TV adverts, but even the content, the way that they delivered their content, it gets you to think of, it's not like, oh, Dove, yeah, that's just um, an aerosol can that I have in my bag. Sometimes you relate to the actual values of the product. And again, this is a human touch that we can deliver to everybody for our content, and it's extremely important. Nike. Does everybody know what Nike's tagline is? Just do it. Just do it. And it is my most favourite ever. Even with my 16 year old, I'm just like, just do it. Just do it. Total different connotation, but you know, it is just do it. So it's more than a tagline for Nike. It's like the heart and soul of their company and their marketing. Um, but what's really cool is it means something different to everybody, but it's motivating for all. So, you know, whether you're a hardcore Olympian athlete or you could be an avid runner or you could be playing for the local team of anything, of football, of squash or whatever it is, just do it. It gives you that feeling of inspiration that, yeah, do you know what? I actually can. It's the whole spirit of it. Again, whether it be billboard, whether it be TV, even on my way here, coming through um, Green Park tube station, they had a Nike sort of like digital, you know, they've got these new digital things that are showing all the adverts, and it said, own the floor. And I was like, yeah, I'm going to go and own the floor. And this is what we're talking about with content. You have to relate it to people so that you can get them hooked. So what can we learn from Nike? Well, they used real people, real stories, so that everybody could relate and feel inspired and, you know, literally just do it and own it for yourselves. So... There are loads of other um, companies that we could say their marketing, their content marketing was great. You know, you've got Maltesers, the lighter way to enjoy chocolate. We've all seen those adverts and it's like, yeah, you can actually put yourselves in those situations. You have Apple, I'm an Android user personally, but you still had people that were camping out for their phones because the way that they made it, it was like it was elite, you could, but it was obtainable and you wanted to be the first. And then you have Zoom, which we all have had a rocky relationship with since, you know, 
COVID. That's when it really came, came in, into play. But they've intertwined real, real experiences and real emotions that get us to, you know, basically use them. So, where does that leave us? So, embracing AI in our creative process, because let's face it, you know, even though I'm head of content, I usually look over people's work now rather than directly creating it myself. But content is still a big thing. And now we need to know how we can embrace it to make our lives easier. We like to work smarter, not harder. So it's not our enemy, but it is a tool that we have to embrace. I know we were having a conversation this morning and I, I asked you if anybody didn't like it, but every, you all seem to like AI. But it's about knowing when and how to use it and also whether it risks truly replacing our human touch. So we're going to examine an AI-generated piece and a human-generated piece, and let's see what we come up with. So here are two pieces. So the importance of storytelling in marketing. I know it's not the most compelling headline, but you know, again, for time's sake, that's what I came up with. So we're just going to run through it quickly. Let me flip that. So on the left hand side, we have the intro. I'm not going to read it because you guys, you will get this deck, so I'm not going to waste your time. But we have an intro, very important. Then we have the what, what we're trying to explain to them. Then we have a connection. Again, this is important because you have to get them to try and to connect the dots. You have the how, the why, and the action. And then on the right hand side, sorry, because I'm facing the other way, we have Similar thing, but in a different order. But then we have the addition of a question, which then makes people, you know, internalise it and think about it. Kind of what we did in the first place when I asked you those crazy, weird questions about ice cream flavours and vending machines. You had to seriously go, oh, actually, I don't know. What would I be or what would I like to be known as? Um, but I want to see a show of hands what you think is human. The one on the left. Okay, thank you. Or the one on the right. Anybody that's not sure? Okay, okay. <laughs> I thought you were going to say, oh, well, everybody's quite sure. So, sorry, just again, the one on the left do you think is human? Okay, the one on the right do you think is human? Okay, the unsure ones is fine. I, I know you are. I'm not going to tell you yet, but yeah, I just wanted to know. Thanks. The, right, so the fusion of AI and human creativity. So, we are standing right now in an intersection. Um, where creativity and AI, uh, human creativity and AI are coming together. So I want to have a little more audience participation of brainstorming of how we can use it to, um, you know, enhance our creative process rather than undermine it. So, any volunteers of how we could be using it? No, oh, guys, you just want me to pick you. Thank you, Luke. <laughs> Go on. Uh, I think of the research piece. Cool. Okay. Anybody else? You, so, okay, so there was nobody here that didn't dislike it. Um, you all put up your hands that you like it or you use it. So you must be using it for something. It can't just be for content. Yes, please. Creating images. Creating images, great stuff. Anybody else at the back? Ideation. Ideation. One more. Go on, give me one more. Please, thank you. Content review. Content review, okay. Well, I'm going to press this button and it's going to come up with all eight of them and then we're going to go through it. So we have research, and then we have automation. We have personalization, prompts, UX or user experience, readability, analysis, and testing. So I am going to read directly from here because I've got a few tools that you could be using because I want you to be able to take something away from here today that you could actually go back and use it within your content production or for research, etc. And if you have scanned your code to get the deck, you will also get the links to them. So we have AI for research. So you've got um, tools like Google AI Platform, Market Muse, and Acrolinks. They help analyze data sets and conduct content research and trend analysis faster than any human can. So in that way, it kind of cuts your time in half. And again, that's working smarter, not harder. Automating routine tasks. So tools such as Hootsuite, Buffer, Tailwind, and AI enhancement on WordPress can help automate tasks like SEO, keyword generation, post scheduling, image resizing, freeing up human, um, sorry, freeing up the human creative process um, for more strategic and creative work. 
Then you have personalization, which you can do at scale. So platforms like Adobe Target, Optimizely, as well as um, various AI enhancements in CRM tools like Salesforce and HubSpot, help analyze user behavior data and deliver personalized content recommendations for obviously driving more user engagement. Then you have generating creative prompts. This is especially important if you are using a platform to create your content. So tools like um, Portance Content Idea Generator and HubSpot's Blog Ideas Generator can suggest potential blog topics, social media posts, newsletter subjects based on trending topics and audience interest. Then you have UX, so that's augmenting user experience. So you can have that chat box like chat bots like Drift, Intercom, or IBM's Watson Assistant provide 24/7 customer support, which deliver personalized content and enhance user interaction. Then readability. So you have tools like Grammarly, which I love, Hemingway Editor, which is okay, but I prefer Grammarly. Um, use AI to provide readability analysis and grammatical suggestions for improved user-friendly content. Analysis, you have platforms like Crayon, Pathmatics, um, help predict future content trends, providing creators with strategic insights on what topic styles and formats might well work well in the future and help shape marketing strategies. And I have got, sorry, number eight, we've got A-B testing. So A-B testing is something I don't think that we really do enough, but Tools like Optimizely and Unbounce help in running A-B tests to evaluate the success of different content variations and optimizing outcomes based on user responses, which they also have A-B testing within HubSpot themselves, which is fantastic. I said I don't personally run the A-B testing. It can be a bit intense, but if you've written a really good piece of content, it's good to know, to know which would be a heading that might need to be changed, or it could just be an image, it could just be a design factor, but it's a good thing to use. Thank you, that was quite intense, that one. So, with all of that, you've created your content. It's like, okay, great, you've got your unique content, but how are you going to use it? So repurposing unique content for better workflows and higher retention. So combined with um, AI, unique content can be repurposed, repurposed across all channels, which drives you know, engagement and helps keep customer retention. But how do we do this? So, I'm, don't worry, I'm not going to pick on anybody. I'm not going to ask. I'm just going to put it down. So, I know we all know about repurposing probably 100 times over, but how many of us actually do it effectively? I put my hand up. Sometimes I don't, and that's probably really bad as head of content. But the fact is, we're, in, we're, we're so used to just creating content and then going, right, okay, we need this. We need a blog post. Okay, yeah, we, we, did, we did a podcast. Right, I need this. I need... Th it's too much work. You're going from le left to right, A to B to C to D where you could just do one piece of big content, like say, for instance, we'll have this, we'll have the talks, we'll have the video, we feed it in, and it can break it down for us into different things. So we're going to go through that. Again, hopefully you can take it away and think, oh, yeah, I've got some content that I can use and break it down. Make it easy for yourself. Just make it easy. Life should be easy. So with original, as I said, with original content, you can just put it into AI, and it will help you repurpose in half the time. So we get my clicky thing. So transform blog posts into infographics. So infographics are obviously visually appealing um, and they're easily consumable. So it makes complex information easy, like easily accessible. So you can transform key data points um, from your blog and you can use things like picture chart to make this presentable and it will convert it into something that's really, really pleasing. And yeah, again, in half the time and you can use predefined template, templates or you can make your own. And then you can turn interviews into podcasts or videos, which is a really cool thing to do um, because obviously we know when you're having an interview or a webinar, it's very personal, it's very real. It's the, of course, you have a, broad, like, like a, a simple script, but it can go off of script real fast. Um, and those are the good bits, and those are the bits that you want to get. So you can, as I said, you can break them down and you can use... Um, Something, uh, transcription services like Descript or Temi, um, and they can turn like, interviews into text also. So you can break it down into, into clips, you can put it on YouTube, you can drive it for engagement, um, and also you can then make further prompts to make podcast scripts or YouTube scripts. Number three, create slide shares from presentations. So, 
Each presentation you create has the potential to be a slide share. Doesn't it, Cluid? Because that's what we're going to do. Um, and you can also like, share it in LinkedIn. Again, it's received very, very well on LinkedIn because it's something that's visual, it's quick, and it's appealing. The ideal professional prefer this because we haven't got the time. We just want to see it there. We want to access the information and be able to digest it very, very quickly. And you can use Beautiful AI, um, which is a great platform. And I was speaking to them yesterday. And I, again, I will get it to download. We've also got a code for them if you ever wanted to use them. that They are giving 20% off for a year subscription with Pro or Team. Um, and it, it's really great. You literally put your stuff in, you put like, your brand colours and stuff and you've got your presentation. So it's really, really good. Um, and then you have, what have we got? Develop ebooks or white papers from in-depth articles or reports. Now, I don't know how many people actually write content here. Yeah. Oh, not so many of you. Okay, quite a few of you, but not so many of you. Well, or you might have teams that do it, or you, you know, it might be your colleague at work. Writing these kind of <laughs> content is, it's laborious. It's, it, once you've done that, it's like you need a whole year off, basically. Um, so to do that, it's like long form content can be, as I said, it can be laborious, and breaking it down just makes it easier. There's so many things you can break it down into. Um, using that one thing, as I said, it can be blog posts, it could be developing an, a structured ebook and structured white papers that can be gated. So I know probably everybody knows what gated is, but to make sure that you're getting um, engagement and leads, make sure that they give their email, or you know you might need their name, their email, and their business, or whatever it is you need. Just make it simple, accessible, and you've given yourself another avenue. So break down webinars into blog posts and social media clips. Now, we also had this conversation earlier. Putting things into chat or whatever platform you have um, to create, whatever AI-powered platform you use for content, you can feed it in and ask it to break it down for you. That's just, it's so much sense and so great because it just cuts the time. So you have a webinar you, and you put it in and you can ask it to structure it for you or to summarize it and then to structure it into different blogs. So you could have one webinar and you could end up with five blogs. That's like, well, that's a whole month's worth of posting if you're only posting once a week. Then from those blog posts, you can ask it to be broken down and you can have so social media posts for it so that you've already got your promotion. Again, half the time, without having to think about it, it's already done it for you. Sounds great to me. And then transform customer testimonials into case studies. This, for me, is the most important thing, especially when we're talking about the human touch. We know customer um, testimonials is your social proof. And once you delve deep into it, again, you can put it into AI, and then you can ask it to create deeper case studies for you. Obviously, you might need to have a little bit of an interview with your, your customer. It might just be a small review, but it can take quite a lot of information as long as you give what you do, whether it be your product, whether it be your service. Put the um, testimonial in, and it can give you a case study. And again, you can then break it down. You can make it to social, social media posts. You can even, they might have um, something particular that it was, it was on or they're referencing. You can then make that into a blog post. There's so many different things you can do out of that one thing. But as I said, for me, transforming your customer testimonials is really, really good because everybody now, what's the first thing you do? You go onto Amazon, you want something, you want to look at the reviews. You're buying something from somewhere or you're going to stay somewhere, you look at the reviews. And that's what drives the human connection because you're like, real people have used it, real people have experienced problems. So that's why I'd say that's the most important thing. Conclusion. Dun, dun, dun. So after all my gabbling, and I thank you for it, um, we're going to come to the end. So the initial question was, does AI make us any less human? Or do we have a unique value that AI cannot touch? So what do we know? Well, I hope we know now. So AI is powerful, but cannot replace our human element in content and quite a few other things in life as well. The combination of human content and AI tools can enhance our creativity process. So it won't take it over, but it can enhance. And both can be used to transform content, your content strategies, workflows, and efficiency. So I think it's safe to say that AI is an, an enhancement, not a replacement. We just need to rethink about how we use it and when we use it. Um, because our experiences, our emotions, our gut feelings, you know, 
it's our, our authenticity is our magic and that's what needs to continue into content creation because let's face it most things and interactions with people is content so that's whether it's a sales script a social media post a blog post you know an interview whatever it is it's all content and that could be visually it could be text it could be yeah so all i can say that your unique perspective and understanding of your audience because obviously i don't know what all of you do and what, who, what your customer base is and whether it's a product whether it's a service but that's what will compel you to write high quality content, but the AI tools are there to help make it better, to make it easier, make it faster. In this day, like we, especially marketing, we have to just keep moving, quick, 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 or we're behind. And this is why we're keeping up with AI so that it can help you. Um, so I look forward to hearing of success stories. I, I would like it if you'd post with us, with White Hat, of how you can implement it, how it might change your strategies, change your ideas, even change your views in the way in which you implement AI into your content creation. So I can't thank you enough for the time of listening to me go on and read. Um, but as I said, all the, t all the tools mentioned will be in the slide deck and also that special offer that we have from the wonderful people at Beautiful AI. And I will now open the floor for questions, if anybody has any. Luke? Which one was human? Which one was human? <laughs> I, knew, I knew you were going to ask me. So, the one on the right hand side was actually human. The one on the left hand side <laughs> was AI. Um, <laughs> I knew, I was like, oh, that's going to be my first question. Anybody else? Or was that the questions that you had? Sorry, at the back. Uh, do you have any advice or opinion on how to train more junior members on their kind of balance? Because I know that I have So basically, like on how to use it, so it's like training. Training someone who has zero experience with it on finding that balance. On finding that balance. That's a very good question, actually. So sorry. Oh, sorry. Yeah. So training somebody that has either no experience or little experience, and obviously not to use it too much and not to use it too little. Um, what I would say with AI, and again, it depends what platform. Some people just go straight to Chat GPT four. I use it within a platform. Um, the one I use is Copy AI. So everybody ha will have their preference, it's like anything. But what I would say is speak to it as you would speak to me. But you have to have information in there that will pertain to whatever it is you want. So for instance, I wrote the storytelling, the importance of storytelling in marketing. That was such a broad term, it could have literally come up with anything. But when I, when I write the prompt, I have to say to it, can you please make an engaging post and I, I gave it like can't be any more than 300 characters long blah, blah 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 I think we kind of get a bit uptight when we sit in front of chat BT because we're like oh um, it's a machine I don't know quite know what to say because my prompts in the beginning to what I do now it was really I thought oh AI is rubbish it's not giving me what I want but it's only because as you said like the lack of knowledge and realization of what you can do and what I would say is all the tools that are that I have listed in here a lot of them have loads of like demos. They have lots of um, sections where you can you can read blogs on questions that are answered. And some of them are actually about like how to write prompts, how to include it in your you know your day-to-day -day business life, whether it be for content, whether it be for sales, whether it be for marketing. I think it's just about obtaining the knowledge. And a lot of these AI platforms have got an extensive amount of content on there to tell you and guide you how to do it. But also, again, just speak to it like you would speak to a human if you want to get a more human response, but give it good, solid information of what you want from it. So, as I said, if it was a blog post like that was written by a human, but you can tell it to analyse it, you can say, could you make it a little bit more conversational? Could you, or you could be like, could you make it a bit more interesting? Because not saying that every human piece of content is really great, is it? So. It basically, you're the artist, it's your paintbrush, you can do what you want to do. And I think just have a, have a bit of, of not necessarily yourself, because I don't know if you're asking for yourself, but have some confidence within it. Is that okay? Yeah, cool. Anybody else? Yes. On your third last slide, <laughs> you, just, yeah. you had the examples of repurposing content. Yes. And, and I, I just was having trouble hearing so you're asking if you can use the AI in HubSpot to repurpose. 
I think you can use the AI in HubSpot to create, but I'm not sure if you can use it to repurpose as of yet, because they're always changing it. But you can create, I mean, obviously, you can use it for landing pages, you can use it for blog posts, you can use it for social media posts. It's on everything within there that you can use it. But as for repurposing, I'm not quite sure. So that I would say to go either directly to ChatGPT or to use a content platform that you could use to either have chat or where you can break it down into different categories of what you want to produce. So that's the other AI tool? Yes, the other AI tool. the links were in the presentation? Yes, links are in the presentation. I did my research for you so that you don't have to. Anybody else? Yes? Good question. So when repurposing with AI, how it can affect your SEO? So we have this conversation quite a lot, McLeod and I, and Peter. Um, what I would say is that it's like anything. It will produce it for you, but you will have to go over it. You, you can't just be like, all right, yeah, straight off the press, just put it up there and, and that will be that. Because obviously it is a machine. It, I mean, humans make mistakes. It does make a mistake. So you might get it to repurpose for you. So say you've got a blog post and you're like, can you break this down into 20 um, social media posts? You have to reread that and you have to make sure it's got your keywords. You have to make sure it, you know, you've got your hashtags, etc., that are pertaining to you because it could just actually come up with something random or 19 of them out of the 20 might be absolutely fantastic and you get that one that's just a curveball and you've put it out and then people are going, oh... Okay, that's, that's not what I expected from them. In terms of SEO, again, <laughs> AI in general, they let it loose and they didn't have rules. And now they're going, oh my gosh, this is going too fast. What are we going to do? And you kind of have to use your own um, considerations, should I say. But in terms of SEO, I know that um, you were saying to me, Peter, on time that, that Google have said they're not going to um, penalise, uh, that's at this precise moment, pen penalise for using AI content. But this is the reason why I'm saying that we need to merge it together because if you are looking over it and you just change a couple of words and you, or you rephrase something, that is a human touch still because you're looking at it from a human perspective to say, well, we wouldn't put that phrase like that or we wouldn't say that or that's not factual because you've checked it so you remove it. So as long as you've still got that human touch, repurposing will cut the time because you've got those 20 there. You just have to review them rather than thinking off the bat, oh, I've got to do 20 social media posts. Because uh, I don't know about you, but personally, I don't like social media posts. So it can be a bit like, hmm. And it's, but that, I mean, I suppose with social media, it's kind of easy because it's just small. But if it was a blog post, for a blog post, you need to make sure you've got your, your headings. You need to make sure you've got your keywords. You need to make sure you've got a good introduction. You've got a good conclusion and that everything within it is factual and you've got your hyperlinks and blah, 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 blah. Yeah, so that way you will still be ranking for your SEO as best as possible. Um, and as I said, it won't be penalised because of AI. Yeah, that OK? Yeah, good content. Well, good content. Yeah, you can come take over. <laughs> right, anybody else? Or are we OK? OK, thank you very, very much. Thank you.